Hi everyone! The eruption at the Sutnuka Crater series on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland is continuing, so there is no change. It doesn't look like this eruption is stopping anytime soon. So what exactly is happening? The Icelandic Met Office has released quite a few updates today with quite interesting information. And then I want to talk about the residents of Grindavik, their home buyout program, and what other home sellers in the area are doing to them because they want to make a, a big a quick buck on the misery of the residents of Grindavik because okay there's roughly 4,000 people in Grindavik so you can imagine I mean how many homes might be needed and that of course has an impact on the real estate market and some people are not playing a quite a fair game with the residents of Grindavik so I'll tell you a story about that but let's look at the updates of the Icelandic Metrological Office first. We know in my video that I released just a few hours ago it's about the whole country being in panic about the earthquakes that are going on in unusual places. So check this out. It's going to be in the end screen. But right now, we just want to talk about what's going on with the current eruption in the Sutnuka Crater series. So it continues and it has now lasted for a month. And the crater continues to erupt. And that's just a short distance from Sutnuk. The lava continues to flow south from that crater, but does not reach far. It basically remains a around that crater. That's why the lava bed is continuing to build up there, very, very close to the crater. So right now there is no threat that this lava might flow towards Grindavik into the sea or towards Swartzengi. Um, Yes, there is this active crater um, that is very, very close to Hagafell, and uh, the Met Office webcam has made a new picture from the Mount Thorbjorn. Mount Thorbjorn is north of Grindavik, basically between Swartzengi, the Blue Lagoon, and Grindavik. And from that mountain, they have taken um, a screenshot of the webcam, and there you can see the eruption still going, and you can also see the lava flow, and you can also see that the lava has built up there. It, it almost looks like one of the defense walls that they've been building, but it's just, you know, lava building up there. That picture has been taken this morning, so it's really up to date. And what about the seismic activity? Because we know that there has been a new seismic swarm basically northwest of Grindavik that was quite intense, um, but the seismic activity has been rather quiet in the eruption area, except that one um, cluster that we have experienced um, um, two days ago. So that earthquake activity that we have seen there that we were wondering what's going on it has lasted for more than four hours and they're saying it's not linked to magma being on its way they're saying saying it's linked to changes in the tension of the crust because the land keeps rising um, underneath short sangi uh, there is still earthquake activity, but that is in the western side of Fagradalsfjall. We have seen eruptions there since 2021. And there's earthquakes at a depth of about 6 to 8 kilometers. Um, and there have been constant earthquakes in that area as well, basically in the last four months. So that definitely needs to be monitored as well. The land rise underneath Swartzengi is stable. It's rising continuously basically since April 4th. And they have done model calculations from GPS records. And they are indicating that the flow of magma into that magma chamber that is underneath Swartzengi is approximately half of what it was before the eruption began last March on March 16th. But, you know, it's half what it's filling up, but then stuff's still coming out at the crater in the Sutnuka crater series, right? So that suggests that half of the magma that is coming from the deeper magma reservoir is accumulating in the magma chamber and the other half is flowing out.
We will have to see how this further develops because if that magma chamber reaches the point of maximum elasticity again, right now it's expanding because it's filling up. But if it reaches the point of maximum elasticity, it will send magma on its way again. So if the current eruptions then is still ongoing, will it make this one stronger again? Most likely because there's already an open path where the magma can flow. If that one has died down until the magma chamber reaches its, its point of maximum capacity well. Would it send it magma to another spot? We don't know, but it's likely that it's probably at the moment going to be at the same spot. Um, there's also still, since the eruption's still going, there's also still a risk of gas pollution from this volcanic eruption, and it can cause pollution in settlements all around the Reykjanes Peninsula. It has reached as far as Keflavik, even into Reykjavik. And of course, my friend, the Blue Lagoon had to be evacuated too or closed down, uh, I believe twice already because of that gas pollution. And the weather forecast for Tuesday is a slow changing direction. The gas may accumulate near the eruption area and basically stay there. And then later on Tuesday, the gas could reach the northwest towards Reykjanes Bear. So that is closer to Swartzengi and my friend, right? Um, tomorrow, west-northwest gas will reach the east and the southeast towards Thorlaxhofen. So it's changing basically multiple times a day. Um, the risk assessment for the areas is basically the same, but something has changed. The Met Office has released a new hazard map and they have lowered the risk level for Grindavik. Everything else remains the same. Why have they lowered the risk level for Grindavik back to orange? Because right now the risk for lava flow has reduced. The way this eruption now behaves, as I just said, the lava is accumulating around the crater. It's not advancing very far. And that's why um, it is basically lowered, but it's still considerable risk because in Grindavik, the gas pollution and the crack, the, the crack hazard level in Grindavik, of course. And then Grindavik now has the same um, hazard level that um, Zone 1 has where the Blue Lagoon and the power plant are located. They all have basically the highest risk right now from gas pollution. So that hazard map will be valid until April 23rd, but only if nothing changes, if everything remains the same. And um, they have given some other information. They have shown like a, basically um, a time lapse that I find is very interesting. You know, this eruption, it's an interesting one. It's the second longest eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula basically since 2021. And uh, only the first eruption that occurred in Fagradalsfjall that began in March 2021 is longer and it has lasted for as long as six months. Then there was the Meradello eruption in August 2022 that has lasted for 18 days, so shorter. And then there was an eruption at Litla Hrut in July 2023 and that has lasted 26 days. So also, the previous three eruptions that we have seen in the Sutnuka Crater series, where the current eruption is happening as well right now, they were short-lived. And there's they have released a table that shows you how long. So we have had that massive magma intrusion on November 10th that came with this massive earthquake swarm that triggered the first emergency evacuation in Grindavik. And that was followed then almost a month later by an eruption that lasted from December 18th to December 21st. So roughly two and a half days. And the lava was spreading in an area of 3.4 square kilometers with a volume of about 2.8 million cubic meters. And we're always saying that magma chamber that is underneath Trotsangi the events have been triggered when it has reached an amount in there of between like 8 to 13 million cubic meters. And then the next eruption, that eruption was more tragic than the other ones because it burned down three homes in Grindavik. There was first only one fissure and then a surprise 
fissure opened right at the doorsteps of Klinbevik and the lava was burning down three homes. That was at Hagafell, January 14th to 16th, so a two-day eruption small area of lava, only um, one, 0.71 square kilometers and only 2.5 million cubic meters were flowing out. So then we have seen shortly after the next eruption in the Sudnuka crater series that lasted roughly one day from the 8th till 9th of February. But the lava was flowing quite fast and it was spreading out about 4.03 square kilometers and a lot of magma was flowing out. So 11.4 um, cubic million cubic meters, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And now we have the current eruption that happened on March 16th. Um, that is going on more than 30 days already. It has already spread its lava in an area of around 6.14 square kilometers. And the volume of magma is massive if you compare what's what fits into that magma chamber. So 31.3 plus minus 2.4 million cubic meters, it has already spread out. So let's have a look at this time lapse. So it shows you exactly in that order where the lava was spreading and you can see it definitely touches the defense walls that have been built especially around Grindavik and it has flown over Grindavikko Vigo in Swartzengi and down in Grindavik and it has also reached critical infrastructure that was destroyed at the previous eruption so it's quite significant lots of lava flow we will have to see what will happen with this? In the past, they have compared that sequence of events of these eruptions and intrusions that we have seen in the Sutnuka Crater series to the sequence of events that have occurred in 1975 when the Krafla eruptions took place. Because there, guys, in a 10-year period, there were 20 magma flows and nine of them ended up with an eruption. We already have like four eruptions here, four eruptions, right? Genu um, December, January, February, March. And in Krafla, the magma flows all entered the same magma tunnel to get to an eruption site or to make that intrusion, but they had all different magnitudes. But what was different is that the eruptions there did not occur at a regular interval like we have here in the Sutnuka Crater series. In the Sutnuka Crater series, it's been happening since November 10th, basically every three to four weeks. And there was basically a tendency that even the time frame between two events would shorten with each event occurring. It's very unusual how constant this activity has been going on so far. Now, of course, the big question is, when will this magma flow underneath Swartzengi end? When will the magma chamber stop refilling? When will that deeper lying magma reservoir stop sending up magma? And when will the eruptions then therefore stop in the area? But the scientists are saying it is not possible to draw any conclusions about the continuation of the earthquakes based on the duration of this eruption and of course the continuation of the whole event like the erupt or intrusion repeat. There is no evidence right now that there is a reduction in the magma flow from the deep magma reservoir that is driving the scenario that we're seeing here that has been going on for the past few months. Also, it is important to note um, that they had already between 2020 and 2022, they had four periods with breaks of varying length where magma accumulation was measured underneath Swartzengi because they could measure the land rise. And almost 17 months passed before um, a magma could come to the surface or a magma intrusion happened, and that is still ongoing right now. So it's been rumbling underneath Swartzengi for quite a while, basically almost four years now, guys. So What's going to happen? They know that they don't know, as always, guys. 
they're saying that the current situation that we're seeing is new because there is an eruption going on and the land is rising again in Swartzengi at the same time. So what they're saying is that the most important thing in this situation right now um, is to patrol the area and respond correctly to the changes that occur in the activity each time to prevent further damage and people being in danger due to this activity. Well, yeah, so what's happening with the people of Grindavik that had to be evacuated basically constantly since November 10th? We know that the buyouts of their homes has started right now through a company that has been formed by the government. And basically together with the natural disaster insurance, the government and some other entities, banks and, and pension funds, um, they're, they're trying to... Um, realize this buyout so that people can buy homes somewhere else. But there is a problem because people are only getting 95% of their fire insurance assessment. So they're not getting market price of these homes, the market price that these homes had before November 10th, of course, right? Because now their market price is basically zero, in my opinion. So, um, one guy is basically telling a story, one resident of Grindavik, is that he has signed a purchase contract for another house in a settlement nearby and that he was waiting for his money from that government buyout program to pay for this property. But the seller of his property that he wanted to buy also made a contract with another seller to move there after the sale of their property. So what has happened now? You can imagine the real estate market in Iceland, it's it's not a huge market. There's not many people. There's a little less than 400,000 people. And, you know, if there is an influx of, you know, it's not 4,000 people, 4,000 people um, was the inhabitants of Grindavik, but there's families. So calculate, like maybe a thousand people are looking for new places. That has an impact on the real estate market, especially in smaller settlements where people are looking to buy. They're not, most of them are not looking to go into Reykjavik where homes are very, very expensive, where they could not get the same standard of home that they had in Grindavik. It's already quite difficult. So they're looking at other settlements that are maybe similar to what Grindavik was. And um, so in this specific case, of course, there was a contract between the Grindavik guy and his seller, and the seller had a contract with another seller. And this other seller has basically thought, okay, Prices are going up because the demand has increased significantly and there's not enough new homes. So that seller, the last one in the chain, basically canceled the contract to put the property back on the market with a way higher price to make more money. So that had a ripple effect. So the seller of the Grindavik resident could not buy that property. So that seller wanted to get out of the deal uh, or wanted to make their property more expensive. So what does that mean for the Grindavik resident who just got 95% of the fire assessment of their home in Grindavik? That is pricing them out of the market, of course. So that specific resident says, well, we're, I'll be out on the street with kids and a wife and a dog and a cat. And he basically says they have like an RV, like a caravan where they can live in and it looks like they have to live in it for many months. So it is a difficult situation because, you know, I always try to see things from two sides before you start attacking other sellers. Um, what is not right, I think, is if you have an existing contract, you should honor that contract. That's, so that's why I think really that seller is definitely at fault and it's not fair. But, you know, if property values goes up, go up because the demand is increased, um, it's always difficult should the sellers carry the burden and so to speak make gifts to other people but on the other hand the real estate market only did go up because of the misery of the residents of Grindavik so <laughs> you would basically try to get a common consensus to say people let's leave the prices at the mark where they were before the disaster happened in Grindavik but you know how it is it will never work
people if it involves money people get greedy so <laughs> the only option would be that no Grindavik residents will buy anything to bring the prices back down because if there's no demand but then it's always like this other people will step in and they will probably buy it so um it's not a nice situation do i know a solution to this um no because i also do not believe in socialism at all and uh, iceland has quite a bit a part of that if i you know the more i look into this um but you know I guess uh, we will have to wait and see how things play out. Um, you know, maybe they should readjust that fire insurance assessment. And, you know, um, the natural disaster insurance has been formed in 1973 when there was this volcanic eruption on the island, on the Westman Island in Westmania that has destroyed many, many homes. And it was basically founded to rebuild communities. So to pay for the repairs of these homes or to fully pay out the residents should that plot of land be inhabitable in the future. This is a difficult situation in Grindavik because it keeps going, it keeps going. There, it doesn't make sense to repair these homes and then wait for them to be destroyed again. But um, the fire insurance is basically combined with the natural disaster insurance, and that's what they're getting in the case of a natural disaster. I mean, of course, they can be happy that there is some kind of insurance and that the government is buying out their homes that's already is a big step in many other countries that might not happen like this right so of but of course if you look at what people the residents are facing uh you don't blame them that some people said we want to go back to Grindavik, we want to go back living there so don't keep us from doing this it's our human right to live in our properties if they're facing another situation that is also not really great so Guys, we will have to see how this plays out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would do. Let me know what you think is the solution. Let's discuss this. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. It would be awesome if you could leave this video a like. And uh, thank you for your ongoing support with the supers. You're absolutely lovely. And of course, with your coffees that you keep buying me so that I can keep going here on my buymeacoffee.com website slash silky. Um, check it out. Um, I'll post stuff there as well. And uh, let's keep in touch there as well. And uh, I hope to see you soon. There's going to be another update probably today. And in the meantime, uh, check out yesterday's video with the panic and the earthquakes that they had. And uh, also something's rumbling in Italy. Campi Flegri. Check that out as well if you like. I see you very soon, guys. Bye-bye.